cheating ex of seven years that slept with my friends, and the journey to recovery. My relationship was my first, and I was the first woman she'd ever dated. We met when we were 18 years old. We had difficulties with her flirting with males throughout the relationship, and I would have to approach her to beg her to stop because it made me uncomfortable, but I trusted her completely. Every now and again, she'd beg to start the relationship, and since I was worried about not being enough for her, I'd acquiesce and let her sleep with guys. This went on for a few weeks every year until four years later, when I was visiting my family and she begged to open the connection while I was gone. I agreed and asked if I might sleep with a buddy who had shown interest earlier, but she declined. She slept with one person on a regular basis while I was away, and it stung. When I finally urged her to end the relationship and stop sleeping with him, she said, don't you want me to be happy, and didn't stop. I told her that this seemed like cheating, and that we could end up breaking up over it. She would rather continue sleeping with him than be with me. Throughout the relationship, I was aware that I had not been flawless, my mental health had deteriorated, and I had developed a horrible habit of missing class and sleeping in. I never shouted at her, struck her, or did anything of the such, despite the fact that I was clinging and needy due to my anxiety and PTSD. But I did provide emotional support and care for her needs, and I've always been excellent at growing and apologizing if I irritated her. We were great friends, and I'm a romantic I was often flirting with her and outspoken about my feelings for her. I handled our first split horribly. I experienced a mental breakdown and had to stay with friends, start seeing a therapist again, and devote myself to work. To be honest, I wasn't very kind to her at the time. She still wanted to be friends, and I would use any chance to debate the morality of her acts with her. She'd constantly shut down and shout at me, all while dating the person she'd cheated on me with. That relationship eventually exploded because she became too serious about him too early, he became enraged because she flirted with his friends, and it became physically violent. She broke up with him and went back to me for help. I was yearning for her affection at the time, and we reconciled and reconnected. I went to counseling to focus especially on the trust difficulties I developed around her, and it was a conscious effort that I fought with every day. I swore to never treat her badly again and to be a forgiving person. I worked hard on my mental health in order to become self-sufficient and stable so she wouldn't have to see my breakdowns anymore. Despite the fact that she didn't hang out with them very much, I built a network of friends that supported me and our relationship. After we graduated, I struggled to find work in my profession while she succeeded. For me, our town had a little industry, but it was basically constructed around hers. I mentioned the possibility of relocating to my hometown, where I could easily find work in my field and, although hers wasn't as large as in our present town, there were still plenty of options. In addition, we'd be closer to my family, whom I seldom saw, and many of my supporting friends. She rejected, citing the fact that we wouldn't be able to see her family as often, at least once a month, since we were moving across the nation. I valued our relationship, and we remained put. I eventually found a job working from home, but the pay was pitiful, and she became the breadwinner. While handling my student loan burden, I utilized the money I earned to give her presents and flowers when I could. We shared the rent, but she was responsible for all of the other expenditures. She would go grocery shopping, and I would prepare our meals, if I didn't have any job, I would clean the home while she worked. Our slogan was we're a team. During those three years of joy, she never requested to open the relationship and would come home with me after work to spend quality time together. She would join us if I spoke with my buddies online. We went on unexpected road trips and dates and spent every minute of every day together. Then one of our pals, M25, got divorced and needed a place to stay. He slept in our spare bedroom since we had one. Because he is an extremely gregarious and chatty guy, our quality time was unexpectedly interrupted by an additional person. He was continuously at home and required a lot of assistance, which we attempted to provide. Right away, I noted how well he and my ex got along, and how he would tell her things and seek her approval over mine. I was pleased of myself for not finding anything wrong with this because of my work on my trust problems. They'd go on walks together, and she'd return home and tell me how it went. I began spending more time with my friends as they chatted, 
but I made it clear to her that I missed our quality one-on-one -on -one time. We tried a few times to have alone time together, but he would inevitably show up and become involved again. She'd attempt to go out of the home to see her closest friend, his wife, F25, so he could get accustomed to being alone. After being vaccinated, I planned a trip to see my parents for the first time in two years. Before I left, I warned her that he was needy and weak, and that they should keep some distance between them. She consented and told me that they were just friends and that nothing bad would happen. I got a nasty feeling in the pit of my stomach at the moment, but I disregarded it. My vacation was fantastic. My parents were overjoyed to see me and considerably more affectionate than usual. All of my internet friends who lived in my hometown came out to celebrate my homecoming, and we had several large celebrations. Every day, I was surrounded by relatives and friends, and they all expressed how glad they were to be with me. Meanwhile, I would text my ex good morning and good night, and tell her how my days were going. She was often saying, I realize you're busy, but thank you for checking in on me. I'm delighted you're having a good time with your buddies. But, as my return trip neared, being surrounded by family and friends in a location I loved became more agonizing. I spoke to my closest buddy, NB26, about perhaps returning home and the practicalities of doing so. They were quite supportive but they understood my reluctance to relocate since my ex had made it apparent that she did not want to go. As I discussed it with a few more friends and my parents, it appeared like the best option for my future would be to make the move, with or without my ex. When I returned, our buddy had abruptly left. I sat down with my ex and told her I wanted to return home. She sobbed a lot and told me she didn't want to relocate, but she felt compelled to do so. I informed her, brokenhearted, that it would be better for us to part up since we don't do long distance well. We decided to be together for the time being and then split up before I relocated. She sourly informed me that our buddy was reconciling with his wife and that they were getting back together. I felt out of the loop, but I believed that there was more to the tale that I didn't need to know about, so we maintained our terminal connection. I introduced her to a relatively new internet buddy who resided in our town. He, M24, was kind, yet strange and odd. We spent a lot of time online playing games and talking. They spoke normally to each other, but I didn't detect any flirting or anything. We all swapped phone numbers and stayed around a bit longer before I left. As the split grew more serious, she began to ask for more distance, and I began to chat to my friends while she spoke to hers. I subsequently discovered that she had been chatting to, M24, four hours into the night, and she told me that she needed someone to speak to about our relationship ending since her closest friend, the wife, and the husband had become estranged. She informed me a week before my travel that we needed to split up right away because she couldn't wait any longer. I sobbed a lot, but I accepted it since I felt myself as partly to blame. She departed after that conversation and didn't return until late that evening. We slept in different rooms. The next few days were the same. I snapped one day and told her how furious and irritated I was with the whole situation, even if it was my fault, and that even though it was my fault, I was still entitled to feel sad about it. She looked at me coldly and scarcely talked with a neutral expression on her face as I sobbed on the floor. Since he'd been avoiding me, I questioned her directly about her connection with M24. She informed me they'd been sleeping together since the day we split up, just after our conversation. She said that she believes she is polyamorous and that she is dissatisfied with only one lover. I informed her that this was not the way to explore her sexuality and that I wished she had been honest with me. Defeated, I went to my room and sobbed for hours on the phone with my closest friend. After that, my ex and I sought to maintain a tenuous relationship for the time being, and she warmed up a little as my flight loomed. I had lunch with the husband and his wife two days before my trip to say my goodbyes. I informed them that my ex and I had formally ended our relationship and that I was looking forward to the future. They were both overjoyed for my relocation and overjoyed that I would be surrounded by loving relatives and friends, yet they seemed impatient. While her husband looked guilty, her wife eventually dropped the bomb on me. Before we broke up and before I ever contemplated leaving, he and my ex were sleeping together the whole time I was out of town visiting my family. My ex had been telling him the whole time about how I was an absent and indifferent spouse, 
and how she wanted to investigate polyamory. His wife found out and abandoned all their present troubles to compel him to return to the home because she didn't want me to be harmed anymore. I was stunned, but I had already been beaten by the news of M24. I said my goodbyes and she apologized for the anguish I was feeling. Her spouse silently apologized as well, perhaps realizing how much he had done wrong. They have both severed all relations with my ex. Before leaving home, I contacted my ex, who responded normally and cheerfully, and told her, his wife told me everything. Would you mind if I stayed away from the home tomorrow while I finished packing? She remained silent for a while, then began weeping and said, I was going to tell you. Before I answered, I don't want to speak about it. I completed packed my things with another buddy to whom I had confided everything. When my ex came to the home the day before my trip to pick up something, I confronted her. I didn't say anything nasty, rude, or hurtful, I simply told her how eager I was for my trip and that this was the last time we'd see one other. She cried while I attempted to keep my face straight, making excuses after explanations. I didn't answer to any of them and reiterated that I was simply here to say goodbye. She stated she wasn't a horrible person and that she realized I may never forgive her and I remained silent. I kept my thoughts on my flight and the future. I eventually left, and that was the last time I saw her. My packing buddy took me to the airport in the morning and wept as she said goodbye, apologizing for how the past few weeks had gone and how thrilled she was for my friends and family to see me again. It's been two months since that happened. Every day at home has been full of affection. My parents are encouraging me while I decide out what I want to do with my life, and my friends make an effort to show me how much they care. I'm frequently invited to gatherings and they call me every day to check on me. I've started going outdoors and driving myself for the first time in a long time, and I feel much more alive than I did in my ex's town. There are a few ladies that are interested in me, but I've made it obvious that I'm not ready to date just yet. My ex and M24 were both thrown out of my online group, and one of them told him off for hurting me. Everyone, including me, has them both blocked. I just discovered via the wife's social media that my ex has been formally dating M24. The wife is repulsed by everything, and they are no longer best friends. A handful of my friends have informed me that he has a history of being predatory and disgusting to women, and that he has always made them feel uneasy around him. I still worry about my ex, but I have to tell myself that she is no longer my concern. However, I am disappointed in her efforts to explore her sexuality in this manner. I have a lot of bisexual and polyamorous friends who tell me she did everything the worst and most destructive manner conceivable. I have nothing against bi and poly folks and I'm sorry that my ex has tarnished their reputation. My pals have amazing, honest relationships and are lovely individuals. Every day, I meditate, exercise, and socialize, and I'm shocked at how quickly I can make new acquaintances. After leaving my ex, a lot of difficulties that I felt were inherent in me appear to have vanished. I'm not needy, insecure, or clinging, I know my limits and attachments, as well as what I want in a relationship. Of course, every day is still a battle, but I'm pleased of how far I've come.